One of the interesting things about pondering life in the galaxy is that when one models the expansion of spacefaring civilizations into the galaxy, it usually ends up happening very rapidly, until essentially the whole galaxy is colonized within a few million years of the appearance of the first civilizations in the galaxy. This expansionism and colonization can be envisioned through self-replicating probes, but also even biological civilizations spreading out on generational ships. And here's where we run into trouble when speculating about alien civilizations. We don't really know anything about their motives or their behavior. We can only speculate. But one solution to the Fermi Paradox, first envisioned by Martin Fogg in the late 1980s, does give some potential motives and predictions of what might happen, or indeed, what may have already happened in the Milky Way. The idea is this. Given that models of the process of colonization present different scenarios depending on conditions, which means that large alien empires could form, or many small ones, but regardless, it seems likely that if this process happens, it may well have happened before the formation of our own solar system, or during the 4.5 billion years before we arose. During that colonization phase, wars may have erupted, and diplomacy and treaties and all sorts of things may have happened, but eventually the galaxy reaches a steady state, or equilibrium, where all the wars are over, intelligence becomes more or less the same across the entire galaxy, and aggression, territoriality, and expansion all fade to become an era of peace and communication between civilizations. Mind you, that if this is indeed the solution to the Fermi Paradox, then we already live in this age of galactic peace without knowing it. The idea continues in that advanced aliens of this nature would view information as an invaluable resource, and would leave developing civilizations alone given that they are non-renewable sources of eventual knowledge. In other words, they don't interact with us until we're ready, and they simply hide from us and let us develop our own knowledge base. When we get advanced enough, they appear, and we all trade knowledge. This seems like something we'd do. If we ever met an alien civilization, we'd have nothing but questions for them, and we'd like to know literally everything about them. Some make the argument that aliens wouldn't care, and we'd be primitive nothings to them. But the answer to this may lie in human behavior. Our scientists do whatever they can to learn about past species that lived on Earth, even ones that weren't intelligent. We'd like to know about them all. We know and have studied the evolutionary history of the cockroach, for example, much less dinosaurs. Alien scientists may do exactly the same thing and be fascinated with our biology, evolution, history, culture, and so on, simply out of curiosity, even though we may not be as advanced or as intelligent as they are. And, in such a scenario, there's no real reason to wipe us out, since the alien civilizations in the galaxy may not value Earth as real estate. Part of the reason for this is that any mineral wealth on Earth is abundant in the solar system, and it's much easier to mine gold or whatever you're looking for from an asteroid than it is to launch it off a planet with a deep gravity well. And they may not even care about planets at all. This idea has been advanced by Isaac Asimov and more recently hinted at by Jeff Bezos. There may come a time where planets are not the ideal places to live, but rather space is, and spacefaring civilizations may spend all of their time in space, from birth to death. This is also true for machine civilizations. If you're a computer, it's far better to be in space as opposed to getting rained on and subjected to oxidation and environmental effects on your planet of origin. Bezos sees this as the future of humanity where the manufacturing base and most of the population move into space and live in O'Neill cylinders. And a handful remain on Earth that wish to, but most of the planet returns to nature. This opens up the possibility that in astrobiology, everyone's looking at the wrong types of stars to try to spot alien life. Right now, the status quo is to look for habitable exoplanets that might be emitting bio or technosignatures, and the focus is on sun-like stars. But if you need energy, which is presumably what alien civilizations will still need, perhaps a bright, giant star might be the better way to go. We usually ignore these because they tend to be short-lived and explode, so not much possibility for life to arise around them. But traveling life is certainly possible, 
and it may be that our first detection of an alien radio signal will be unexpected and come from a type of star we didn't expect. That the advanced alien civilizations of the galaxy leave certain planets alone or put them under interdict may happen very early in a planet's history. The aliens may survey planets periodically, and once they find microbial life, they leave that planet alone and perhaps watch from afar, collecting data on the development of that planet throughout its history, from the microbial start to the intelligent end, if there is one. This opens up a rather amazing possibility in that such a civilization that's been watching Earth since its formation could have a complete record of the history of our planet that they may someday give us. Imagine watching a fast-forward version of the formation of the Earth to the present. To step even further into science fiction territory, such a civilization may have a high interest in exozoology, where they periodically come and collect specimens of Earth life, and that there may be few or no extinct species of Earth's macrofauna. They're just extinct here, but pterodactyls and trilobites may populate alien zoos across the galaxy. But that may also mean that somewhere out there, there are humans in those zoos, along with Denisovans and Neanderthals and Homo erectus and such. Imagine being stuck in an alien zoo cage with a pterodactyl after Glorcon the zookeeper mistakenly put it in there with you because he was preoccupied with his third spawn's decision not to go to college. Having taken another solution to the Fermi paradox a bit too far, the zoo hypothesis, I digress. The problem with the solution to the Fermi Paradox is that such an alien civilization leaving the planet alone would presumably make themselves indetectable from our position. They beam no radio signals towards us, and perhaps cloak their inhabited planets with lasers to confuse our instruments into telling us that their inhabited exoplanets are uninhabitable. This means it's simply a plausible scenario, rather than anything that can be tested so you aren't likely to know the answer here until the aliens finally reveal themselves. But hiding aliens, as with the related zoo hypothesis, do offer a possible explanation for the Great Silence. And if we go for centuries without detecting any alien civilizations, then we would have to consider those options along with the idea that we may be utterly alone. But within the interdict scenario are some other less rosy variants and any kind of galactic harmony could be offset by crushingly long communications times and translation issues. Alien civilizations may never understand each other sufficient enough to accomplish this. That may lead to a multiple empire scenario where we don't know about the empire we are located within, but may detect other empires distant from us. This could be scary because say we spot a distant alien civilization, and we detect the technosignature of a defensive weapon, say a nickel Dyson beam, essentially a Dyson sphere with a hole cut into it to direct energy as a weapon, beam to destroy other planets. Or Jabilsky's star, which is reported to be loaded with transuranic elements like plutonium, something Sagan once suggested might be a way for aliens to say hello, just start seeding their star with elements that shouldn't be there. But it could also say that we have advanced nuclear technologies and can make as many bombs as we want. Stay away. This would leave us wondering exactly who they have armed themselves against. And if we saw that this civilization maintained outposts and star systems all around it, all similarly armed, then the plot thickens. Then we have to ask if that enemy, whomever it is, is who put our world under interdict for some reason. We would then live deep inside someone's star empire that is seen as a hostile threat by another alien civilization. Which is the threat to us? Or are neither a threat, or both? What happens if we're not under interdict, and they simply don't know we're here yet? Could we one day wake up and find ourselves in the middle of an alien war between two civilizations far more advanced than our own? The chance isn't zero, but we've never seen evidence for any of this and we'd probably have been vaporized long before now, possibly even millions of years before we arose here if that were the case. But the interdict scenario motivates us to think in terms of the Great Silence being artificial, and that alien civilizations in the end ultimately hide from each other, or have a bar at which their existence is kept secret until a developing civilization is ready for contact. Or contact may never come at all, because aliens simply leave each other alone. 
that's something we might also do. If we ever discover an alien civilization, we might choose not to message them with a MIDI signal due to it being rather dangerous because of all of the unknowns involved in contacting an alien civilization. There may be a time, centuries from now, where we know of many alien civilizations in the galaxy, yet contact none of them and only passively watch their activities from a distance. This in itself is a separate solution to the Fermi Paradox. But on the other hand, who wouldn't want to chat with an alien civilization? especially if the distances are simply too great for anyone to pose a threat to each other. The conversation might last for thousands of years and would be painfully slow at the speed of light, but that it could happen at all would be among the greatest discoveries in human history, and over time, we might learn what an alien civilization is like. And the reality of that is that there is a kind of natural interdict scenario for our location in the universe, where you do eventually get to learn about aliens but the universe itself limits you on what you can know until you're by default an ancient civilization yourself. Thanks for listening, I'm futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently eyeing a plastic pterodactyl suspiciously. A flying reptile with sharp teeth is sort of like the idea of a land shark, a bad thing to have around humans. I know, birds descend from the dinosaurs, but they lost the teeth. That asteroid did us a favor, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.